Section 6-2, example 7. So we're going to practice simplifying some more logs. We've only done one example, and we might feel a little overwhelmed. Um, we just need more practice. So I'm going to combine log base 10 of 2 plus 2 log base 10 of 5 into a single log. Um, I can't add them because they're different, but I can use those properties from last time. So first we're going to get rid of any coefficients and bring them back as powers. So the two coefficient becomes a power. So log base 10 of 2 plus log base 10 of 5 squared. And I'm going to rewrite that as log base 10 of 25. And then addition tells me I can bring them into a single log as a product. So log base 10 of 2 times 25, which is log base 10 of 50. And that would be considered a simplified version. It's nicer to have one expression rather than multiple expressions, so we can combine them to make it a more simplified expression. Um, we can also use some of the earlier properties where um, logs and powers cancel each other out. So E and LN will cancel each other out. I just have to get rid of this negative. So E to the negative LN5, um, they don't immediately cancel because of the negative. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over e to the ln of 5. That's the property for negative powers. Right, they flip it. And then e and ln are inverses, so they cancel out. And I just get 5, so I get 1 fifth here, because it's in the denominator. And that's it. And that only works because ln has base e. So e to the x and ln of x are inverses because they have the same base. So in example c, when I have log and I have 9 to the log 3, those are not the same base. So we need the same base before we can cancel. So I know that 9 is 3 squared. So I'm going to rewrite 9 as 3 squared log base 3 of 8. So that would be 3 to the 2 times log base 3 of 8. And then before the 3 and the log 3 cancel out, I have to get rid of the 2. So I'm going to use that power property and bring that in. So we get 3 to the log base 3 times 8 to, of 8 squared. So now the 3 and the log base 3 cancel out because the bases match. And we're just left with 8 squared or 64. So a little weird. It takes some practice to get used to this. It might be brand new for some of us. Let's try one more example. So let's say we have log base b of 3. We don't know what b is, but we know log base 3 log base b of 3 is 0 0.5022 and log base b of 2 is 0 0.3169. So let's find log base b of 9 and 6. So basically what I need to do is I need to write, rewrite in terms of 3 or 2 because that's the only ones I know. So I would rewrite log base b of 9 as log base b of 3 squared, which we almost know because we can use the power property to bring the 2 out front. And we get 2 log base b of 3. And now we can solve this because we know log base b of 3 is 0 0.5022. So log base b of 9 would just be 2 times that. Your calculator will not do this because we don't know what base b is, um, but we can do 2 times 0 0.5022 on our calculator and get 1.0044. But your calculator will not find the actual log for you because it doesn't know what b is. In fact, I don't know what b is. None of us know. Um, so let's do 6, log base b of 6. So we need to rewrite 6 in terms of 2 and 3, which it would just be 2 times 3. 
And then we can use that addition property where log base b of 2 times 3 is really log base b of 2 plus log base b of 3. So if these rules are new to you, flashcards would be really useful. Um, but with practice, you do memorize them without intentionally memorizing them. So just lots of practice. Um, and now we can solve this because we know log base b of 2 is 0 0.3169 plus log base b of 3 is 0 .0, 0 0.5022. And then we add them up and we get 8191, 0.8191. And that's it. So we're just practicing these properties for logs and exponentials so that we can do some solving equations and some exponential models in the later sections. So get some practice with the rules for simplifying so that we can solve some equations in the next section.